In this video, we'll be looking at how to write the equation of a line in standard form. So I'm assuming at this point that you've already learned how to write the equation of a line in slope-intercept form and that you're comfortable with that. And we'll be looking at how to change from slope-intercept form to standard form and vice versa from standard form back into slope-intercept form. So let's begin by talking about first what exactly is the standard form of the equation of a line. If the equation of a line is given in this form, ax plus by equals c, where a, b, and c are all constant numbers, so let's put that over here, a, b, and c are all just regular numbers, and I'm writing it in fancy notation here, but that just means that they're whole numbers. The z means that they're integers. All right, so this is just a fancy way of saying our numbers a, b, and c are whole numbers. That's all. So we're going to look at how to get our y equals mx plus b format and change it into the standard form. We're also going to look at our ax plus by equals c format and how to change that into y, x, y equals mx plus b. So let's begin with an example. So in my example, I have a line and I want to change it. So right now, it's in slope-intercept form. y equals 1 third x plus 2 over and I want to change it to standard form. All right, so standard form, if you look carefully, you will notice that on the left side of my equation, I want my x and my y. And on the right side of the equation, I want the number that stands alone by itself. So, here is how I'll start. I'm going to just start off by rewriting the equation, like 1 third x plus 2 fifth. And I want my x and y on one side. So I'm going to subtract the 1 third x from both sides. So it will go away from that side. And I'll get on my left side negative 1 third x plus y is equal to 2 over 5. So just that alone, and I'm almost there. Except for the fact that, again, we want our numbers a, b, and c, meaning the numbers a before our x, the number before our y, which we don't have one yet, and the number that stands alone, we want them to be whole numbers. We want them to be integers. So at this case, what we need to do is we need to look at our denominator. Um, so we have a denominator of 3 and a denominator of 5. So we look at all our denominators, and we have that 3 and 5. And we look for a common, a common multiple for our 3 and 5. And the easiest common multiple to see, which is also the lowest common multiple in this case, is 15. So we take our common multiple of 15, um, and we multiply everything by 15. The purpose of this is to get rid of the denominator. So let's put a little note here so we know that the purpose of this is so we can get rid of the denominators. We can't just get rid of them and just trash them. We have to do something in order to get rid of them. All right. Another option here would be to first multiply everything by 3 and then multiply everything by 15, I mean by 5. But instead of doing it in two steps, I'm going to do it in one step here today. And let's see what happens. All right, so when we multiply negative 1 third by 15, we get negative 15 over 3 x plus, when we multiply 15, 15 by y, we get 
15y. And when we multiply 15 by 2 fifths, we get 30 over 5. So we're almost there. We're actually right there. Um, we can just simplify that a little bit further. Negative 15 over 3 is actually negative 5x plus 15y, stays 15y, equals 6. And now our answer, or our equation, is in standard form. You may be wondering, why would anyone want it to be in standard form when it tells us so much more information in slope-intercept form? True, I agree. Um, standard form tells you a little bit more about your x and y intercept, um, but we'll discuss that later. Um, what I now want to do, though, is talk about how do we get something to go back from standard form to slope-intercept form. So stay tuned. Okay, so here we have an example. Something is in standard form, and we want it in slope-intercept form, which makes a whole lot more sense to us because when it's in slope-intercept form, we can see what the slope of our line should be, and we can see what the y-intercept of our line should be just by looking at that equation in that form. So let's get this into slope-intercept form. All right, we know that we're working towards this. We want it to ultimately look like y equals mx plus b, so we can see our slope and our intercept. Um, in order to do this, really, there is one major step that takes you through the whole thing, and that is to isolate y. If we isolate y, we will get this in slope-intercept form. So let's see how this goes. Um, if we want our 2y by itself, we can take the 3x away from both sides. So on the right side, on the left side, sorry, we now have 2y equals negative 3x. And I put that first because, again, we're working towards slope-intercept form where the x is first plus 7. All right, now we just need that y alone, so we can divide both sides by 2. Everything gets divided by 2, and we get y equals negative 3 over 2x plus 7 over 2. And now we have our equation in slope-intercept form, where we can see easily here that the slope is negative 3 over 2, and the y-intercept is equal to 7 over 2.